Happy Halloween! Today is my last tutorial. This is the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Billy was also my model for the Jared Leto Joker and Bill's twin brother Jack was my model for the Heath Ledger Joker. So if you want to see those tutorials I'll link them on screen for you now. I'm using witch hazel to remove any oils on all the areas I'm going to be applying glue to stick down the bald cap. I have a tutorial on how to apply a vinyl ball cap. Billy was also my model for that, so I'm going to link that on the top right of the screen now. So go ahead, watch how to apply it, and then come back. I always get my ball caps from the Makeup Armory. As you can see, this one is flesh coloured. It just makes it easier to cover the hair. You can apply a wig for this tutorial if you can get a good wig. All of the ones I found online were really bulky and just didn't look very good, but I still bought a specific Joker wig, but I decided that I would apply a ball cap and do the same technique that I've done in many tutorials and just kind of remake the hair and the wig on top of the ball cap. Applying a ball cap might seem daunting but it's not as hard as it might first appear. So this is the wig I bought, it was under £10 and I got it from eBay. The inside looks like this and as you can see the front is just too bulky to make it look very good. What I did like is that it does have a bit of a natural curl to it. The way I tackle this is to look on the inside of the wig and as you can see there's a little band holding each of the wefts together. So what I like to do is go through and cut the wefts apart and I can use them to stick to the bald cap. What I decided for this specific look was to cut the base one off and apply that to the nape of the neck and then I would take the whole middle section as one and use that to stick to the centre of the head and above the crown. And then I would cut up the individual strands to apply around the hairline to make it look a little bit more realistic. To stick this to the cap I'm using Prosaid. I'm using Cream Prosaid which I got from the Makeup Armoury but you can get liquid, it just depends on your preference. Here you can see I've cut the middle of the wig out and all the wefts are still intact so I'm just using that as a bulk piece to apply in one go. And then I'm just cutting the wefts shorter of the ear so that they fit nicely to the head. I've applied some of the Prosade around the ear area and around the sideburns and once that starts to go a bit tacky I take chunks of blunt cut hair from the wig, put the tips of it into the Prosade and then tuck that behind the ear to secure it in place while it dries and the idea is that it will face the right way so it's going to go away from the face and behind the ears as it dries. As the hair starts to come forward you need to start taking smaller chunks of hair and making sure that they are a lot softer in their appearance. It's always going to be hard to make green hair look natural so you want to try and make it as soft as possible and as light in appearance as it comes forward because that's going to give you the most natural hairline. I'm taking some got to be glued hairspray and I'm starting to shape and sculpt the hair to look a little bit more like the Joker. At the very front of the hairline I've stippled a tiny amount of green just so that the hair when it comes out looks a little bit softer because it is quite harsh against the skin tone otherwise. It just makes the density of that hair appear a bit fuller without having too much hair coming out the head at the front. At this stage I kept laughing at Bill because he really reminds me of Loki. So if you do want to cosplay as Loki then this is a really good way to create that kind of hairline but using black instead of green. At the top of the ball cap where it meets the hair, I'm going to apply the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This is just to make sure that the ball cap and Bill's forehead match and also because we're not entirely sure at this stage how high we're going to take the white paint for the clown mask. You can see that Billy's skin is a little bit pinkier than the bald cap, whereas you can see here that the transition between the bald cap and Bill's head is seamless because the concealer has matched the two together. So I'm not taking it all the way down the forehead because we're now going in with a white cream base makeup which I'm going to stipple on and it's going to go up to where we've applied that concealer. I'm using a stipple brush to apply it, I don't want anything too uniform. If you look at reference images of the Joker's makeup, the face paint looks worn in, it looks quite roughly applied. But this really does depend on what stage of the movie that you're applying the makeup from. There's so many variations of it, so it really is your preference, but I'm going for a slightly more textured finish. 
there's less space above the eyebrows than there are on the rest of the face so around the rest of the face you can just get the colour on don't worry if this part looks more blended because you don't have time to stipple instead you're just smoothing it straight on it doesn't matter because we're going to use a different medium over the top to stipple but around the forehead you do need to be careful because you can't afford to take that colour too high because you are supposed to see some flesh tone between the face paint and the hairline when you stipple around the eyes it's a really good idea to kind of scrunch your eyes up because this creates texture which again looks more worn in and because Joaquin Phoenix is older than Billy he does have some more smile lines compared to Bill so having Bill scrunch his eyes up it almost emphasizes wrinkles that aren't there when he relaxes his eyes again when you look at reference images of the Joker his hairline looks very square but it does actually camber slightly at the front so we have created a bit of a dip towards the center with the hair but with the paint along the forehead you want to make it more squared off now I'm taking a Dillium Tools stipple brush and some white face paint and I'm roughly stippling that onto the face but before it dries I'm going back in with my small stipple brush and working over the top of it just to take down a little bit of the heaviness of the stipple but making sure not to completely remove that additional texture that we're applying. With the Joaquin Phoenix Joker you can't see his skin necessarily showing through so the idea is that the top layer of the paint is cracking and coming away a little bit and looks worn in but the colour underneath is still white so just be sure to layer your products for that texture because it's really effective. I'm taking a very tiny paintbrush and dipping it into a little bit of IPA and that's going to blend through both the paint and the cream and create a little bit of a worn out effect. Again, it's all about creating texture and that worn in appearance. As Billy is younger, this is a great way to emphasise wrinkles that aren't there and folds in the skin and then we can go in with some shading to emphasise those folds. I'm also wearing some away on that filtrum area and around the sides of the small lines on the eyes and some extra ones on the forehead. We'll do a bit more of this once we've got the paintwork in place as well. Here I'm using a slightly bigger brush and tapping that on around the inner corner of the eyes but it is a good idea to keep your eyes closed because even the smallest amount of IPA is a little bit fumey so make sure you tap off all the excess onto the back of your hand or onto a tissue before you go in anywhere near your eyes. I'm using the same technique at the top of the forehead, we don't want this area to be too defined and the edging is where the paint would be finished so that would be where it would wear away the quickest. You want to give the illusion that you could have just put this on with your fingers. I'm just putting in a few more lines around the brows and the forehead before moving on to create the blue above the brows and below the eyes. So this is another super colour cream based product, I've mixed some shades together to create a bit of a teal colour. Again, you can use face paint, you don't have to use cream, but when I've looked at some of the test images of the makeup, it's quite shiny, like a cream, and creams tend to wear quite well like this on the skin, so that's why I want to use the creams. I've decided to use a flat brush because you can get good coverage with a flat brush, but you can also turn it on its tip to create more shape and defined lines if that's what you want. So we are shaping the brows to be like triangles, one will be slightly higher than the other by the time we've finished and you want them to be quite rough looking. Again, the makeup throughout the film does vary, so there are lots of variations that you can choose to create. You can do them where they're a little bit more drippy, more defined, it really is your preference. I would say for the triangles on the brows, keep them at the same height to begin with and then once you've decided which eyebrow is going to be the higher one when you do the little red brows, then you can adjust the blue because that's what I decided to do. Underneath those lower eyelashes, you're also going to create a triangle and again one side's going to be longer than the other and it is a little bit more drippy so you will want to swap your brush for a fine liner brush. You can also dip it into a small amount of IPA to give it a bit more of a drippy appearance. I feel like smudging it out is a really key step just because you don't want it to look as if it's something that you've applied with a brush. Once you've applied one layer of the IPA, clean your brush off and go back in with another layer and then do that even slightly further out. This will give it almost like a tear stained effect. You can also use your brush to pull it out into those little tiny smile lines that you've created. This side is going to be my slightly shorter side so although I'm creating a drippy effect it's not coming down as far. Joaquin's brows are slightly heavier set than Billy's so I am applying a tiny amount of black eyeshadow onto the cream underneath his brows and also a little bit around the nose. Going back into my white cream I'm reapplying this to the lid of the eyes to make this a little bit more intense and then adding a little bit of shade into the inner corner of the eyes. 
I'm taking some red superstar face paint and using a small brush I'm going to start mimicking those classic joker brows I'm using the reference image that the brows are quite clean however if you do want to do the more disheveled look then still create the clean brow to begin with and then use a little bit of IPA on a small brush to start dragging that red down to create a bit of a drippy disheveled melted look once you've done both eyebrows, one should be slightly bigger and slightly higher and then you can move on to the nose. It's easier to start working down the face than to work up because otherwise you might start to smudge everything. The nose is the hardest part because Billy's is slightly turned up compared to Joaquin Phoenix who has a slightly downturned nose. So again just paint what you see rather than trying to replicate something that isn't possible if the structure's not there. I'm starting with the slightly higher smile line on the cheek. We're going between the earlobe and the nose and just putting a point down onto the skin. Then we're going to work from that as our base. This was my favourite part because the look really starts to come together once you start to get that warped smile onto the face. If you study the reference images you can see that the paint actually goes above and below the natural lip line and it's anything but symmetrical so look at what you're painting and try and replicate the shape as best you can adapting to your own face shape. The lips do change slightly as the movie goes on, one minute they're quite smudged, some of them are a little bit more defined, obviously I'm doing the defined look so I'm sticking with that. Then I'm going to add some shading to the face, again using some black eyeshadow on a small fluffy blending brush. I love working with eyeshadows on top of creams because once you apply the eyeshadow you can go back in with a brush that has a little bit of the cream on and you can soften it which gives you a beautiful gradient and that's given us a lovely shadow. So I'm copying some of the shadows that's on the Joker's face to kind of mimic that on Billy which in turn helps him to look more like the character. I'm obviously concentrating a lot of this shading around the centre of the face because Billy is facing you straight on but don't forget there is shading around the sides of the face such as the actual smile line. And the majority of this one is on the high smile line which I'm doing now. So lay that eyeshadow down and blend it out with a brush that already has some cream on it. I'm also taking some of that around the chin. This helps to give the illusion that Billy's chin is shaped slightly differently. Don't forget to also do it around the bridge of the nose. Make sure you're looking at your reference image and then painting what you see, not what you think you see. I have a few last steps which is to add in a few more furrow lines underneath those new eyebrows. And also a tiny amount of white underneath those lower eyelashes. And that completes today's makeup tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to Billy for being a fantastic joker. Please hit subscribe if you're new to my channel and don't forget to follow me outside of YouTube on my social handles. Thank mm -hmm. you.